Measuring site search with Google Tag Manager is definitely useful. It can give you ideas of what kind of content or products you should create next. But you know what's even better? Being able to quickly access which keywords did not provide any useful results. Because then you will really know what's missing on your site. Let me show you. Here I have a demo website and on this website I have Google Tag Manager installed and inside Google Tag Manager I have installed Google Analytics. Here is the GA4 configuration tag and it fires on initialization. If you have no idea what GA4 configuration tag is, then I will post a link to a tutorial below this video where I explain how to install GA4 with Google Tag Manager. So on this website, I have a site search feature where I can look for something. So let's say that I will enter a keyword and here I get the zero search results message. So there is no content on this page related to the keyword test. Google Analytics has a feature called enhanced measurement and that feature can track site searches that are happening on your page. And you would be able to see that the visitor entered the keyword test. However, looking at that data, you will not be able to tell whether the search actually returned some results. But this information is useful. So let's take a look at how can we configure this. First of all, we are going to implement custom site search tracking with Google Tag Manager. To do that, first we need to go to Google Analytics, Admin, and disable the built-in site search tracking. Go to Data Streams, and then select your website data stream. Here in the Enhanced Measurement, click this icon, and then disable Site Search. Click Save. Now let's implement the basic site search tracking with Google Tag Manager. Go to Google Tag Manager, then go to Variables, in the user defined variable section, click new, variable configuration, and then we are going to select URL variable because in the URL of the site search results, we have this part, which goes after the question mark. So this is the query parameter and this is the value. With Google Tag Manager, we can create a variable that will return the value of Q. So I will select the URL variable and here in the component type, I will select query and enter Q. Now I will name this variable like that and let's test if this is working. So I will click preview and here I will enter the URL of my search results page. So I copy it, paste it here and click connect. I see that my preview mode has connected and now if I go to the preview mode here and go let's say to container loaded, and variables, I will see that URL queue contains test. Now, if I go to another page that does not contain the queue, then the value of that variable will be undefined. So let's go to Google Tag Manager and first we will create a trigger that will be activated if URL contains the queue parameter and some value in it. So let's go to triggers, new, trigger configuration, and then this time I will select Dumb ready. Later, I will explain why this is necessary in this context. So now I will just select Dumb ready, some Dumb ready events, and URL Q is not, so does not equal undefined. So if it contains any value, then this trigger will be activated. Let's name this trigger and then click Save. Now let's create a tag in Google Tag Manager that will send the site search event together with the keyword to Google Analytics 4. To do that, go to Tags, then click New, Tag Configuration, Google Analytics, and select GA4 Event. Here you have to enter the measurement ID of Google Analytics, and that ID must be the same as it is in your Google Tag or Google Analytics 4 configuration tag right here. So for example, if I click here, I will see that this is my tag ID or measurement ID, so I will just go to new again, tag configuration, Google Analytics, G for event, and then I will paste it right here. But let me show you one good practice here. You will be doing this action of pasting measurement ID in every future Google Analytics for event tag as well. So I would recommend instead of manually pasting this ID over and over again, instead you could create a variable that will contain this ID and then it will be easier for you in the future to insert that variable. So instead of this, let's cut it and then click the button right here. And if you already have that 
variable with the measurement ID, maybe you created that in the past, then you can select it somewhere here. But in my case, I don't have it. That's why I will click the plus, then variable configuration, and I will select constant. Here, I will paste that measurement ID. And now I will name this variable, let's say, GA4 measurement ID, and then I will paste the actual ID, click Save. Here you should see the green check mark, but unfortunately I don't see that right here. I think it's a bug. So what you could do here is that you can select it, cut it and paste it again, and then the validation will be triggered. Then here you must enter the event name and that event name must be exactly view search results. And then we have to send the keyword that was searched for. So click event parameters, add parameter, and then enter exactly like this search underscore term. Here we have to insert the URL variable that we recently created, click the button, and then insert it right here. Finally, in the triggering section, click anywhere and add the DOM ready trigger that we just created. Finally, let's name this tag and click Save. Also, one more thing that I remembered is that sometimes visitors can enter test, let's say with the uppercase T. In this case, Google Analytics will treat both those keywords as different keywords because Google Analytics is case sensitive. So what we can do is that we can set the value of this Q parameter to be always tracked as lowercase. We can do that by going to Google Tag Manager, variables, Let's find that URL variable. And after you click it, you should click format value and change case to lowercase. So it means that this variable will always return the lowercase value regardless of what is entered in the URL right here. Click Save. Now let's test if this is working. So far, we haven't done anything related to zero search results. We will do that soon. Right now, we are just replicating the built in G4 functionality. Click preview. This will refresh the preview mode. And then we will see that on DOM ready, our view search results tag fired. And if I click it, I will see the variable here. And if I switch to values, I will see what was sent. Now, if I go to Google Analytics, and then in the admin, I go to debug view, I will see the view search results event here. And here is the parameter that we sent. Now, how can we identify that there are no search results on this page? Ideally, it would be good if the developer could add some element on a page that contains ID, which could be equal to something like no search results or something like that. But right now, let's say that I don't have access to developers or they are not just available. And therefore, I will take the slightly worse path, which is I will just try to scrape this value. And if it says zero results, then I will treat this as the search page without any results. But again, ideally, it would be better if developers could set some parameter, maybe in the data layer or something like that, that would tell us that there are no search results. So how can we do this? So first, I will do the right click and click inspect to see what kind of data do we have here. And here, I see that this text right here is an H1 or heading one, and its class is H2. And inside of it, we have the zero results. So now I can go to Google Tag Manager, I'm in the variable section, and I will create a new variable of which type is DOM element. So this variable will be able to access the value of any element that is available on the page. In my case, I will be accessing H1 element with class H2. So here in the selection method, I will switch from ID to CSS selector because this element right here does not have any ID. So here I will write a CSS selector. So this topic is more complex. In this video, I will not dive deeper into the details about how CSS selectors work. If you want to learn more about that and take a look at my intermediate slash advanced Google Tech Magic course. Right now, what I will show you is just the actual selector. So I will be looking at elements that are H1. And I want to narrow that down to those elements that have the class H2. So dot H2, because in CSS selectors, dot means class. So this is class H2. 
and then I will name this variable something like that and then I will click save. Then we will need to go a bit more advanced and we will write some JavaScript code. That code will check the value of the DOM element variable and if it contains zero results then it will return let's say the value zero and if it does not contain that then we will treat this as that there are more search results on a page more than zero. So in this case actually you know what maybe first we could check if the DOM element variable works so I will click preview and then I click on DOM ready variables and here I see the value of the variable right here and I'm specifically selecting DOM ready because we are trying to access the DOM element therefore we need to make sure that the DOM is ready at that moment. So now let's create a JavaScript variable. In Google Tag Manager go to variables and then in the user defined variables section click new. Then variable configuration and custom JavaScript variable. Now let's write an anonymous function like that and then we will write an if statement. So that statement will say that if the DOM element variable contains the word zero results, then the variable will return zero. Otherwise, it will return the string one plus. So here's the if statement. We open it and then we enter double curly braces to be able to select one of our variables. And then I will select that DOM element variable like that. Then in plain JavaScript, there is a method called index of, and in this case, we will be looking for zero results. So I will copy it and I will paste it right here. So if this variable contains this, and that can be done by setting the value like this. So if this index of returns something more than minus one, because minus one means that the text does not contain the value that we are looking for. So if this condition is met, then this JavaScript variable should return, let's say zero. If this condition is not met, then we can return one plus, which means that there are one or more search results. Let's name this variable and then click save. Now we will need to update the event tag. So go to tags, then click the view search results tag, then expand it and add another parameter. This time we are going to use a custom parameter. So let's say that I will call it num of search results, or in other words, number of search results. And then I will insert the custom JavaScript variable that we just created. Click the button here and then select the variable. Finally, click save. And now let's test if this is working. So first of all, I will close the website completely, the preview mode as well, and I will start fresh. Click preview. Now I will go to the home page to test if this is working. So click connect. And here, if I click on DOM ready, I will see that my tag did not fire. This is expected because now I am not on a search results page. So here, even though the variable contains one plus, I don't care about it because the tag that uses this variable is not fired. I mean, I could update the JavaScript code to return undefined if the page is not related to search results, but in this case, I just don't need it. So I will keep the code simple. And even though this says one plus, this is not a problem because the tag did not fire. Now, if I go to the search and enter some keyword that actually returns some search results. So if I click that, I have the keyword here. And then in DOM ready of the next page view, the tag fired and its value of the num search results is one plus. So it means that there is at least one search result. And indeed, I have, in fact, two search results right here. Now, if I enter test, let's see what happens. There are no results. And here, on DOM ready, I have the tag fired again, and this time it says zero. Now let's go to the debug view of Google Analytics 4, and I have two search events. The first one is here, and the number is one plus, while the most recent one is zero. So this is working correctly. Now the drawback of this solution is that we are scraping the text here, and if the text changes, then your trigger will break. If the visitor uses, let's say, Chrome browser and translate your page, 
then your trigger will most likely break as well. So as I've said, ideally, it would be better if the developer could push the number of search results to the data layer before Google Tag Manager is loaded. For example, here I have a demo where before all the events, the developer pushed this parameter to the data layer, which says zero. On other pages, if there are some results, maybe there could be, let's say, five. So if you have this, then you could just create a data layer variable and use that data layer variable in the field right here, instead of going with DOM scraping and custom JavaScript, which is riskier. So cooperating with a developer and getting that data in the data layer would be a better option. But I just want to show you this kind of proof of concept, and I want to inform you about possible drawbacks. But speaking from the technical perspective right now, it looks like my solution works. So the next thing that you should do is to publish these changes in Google Tag Manager container. So click submit and then complete all the steps that you are asked to do so. And then once you complete this, you open the GA4 tag, then you copy this name of the parameter, and then you go to Google Analytics, Admin, Custom Definitions, and then create a custom dimension where the scope is event, the parameter name is this one, and then the dimension name could be anything that sounds clear to you, like number of search results. Click Save. And then after 24 hours, and after you have been collecting data for a while, you would be able to use that custom dimension in a report. Now let me show you how you could build that report with zero searches. So go to Reports, go to Library, then create new report, create detail report, and then click blank. Here, you can click add dimensions and then select search term like that, click apply. Then in metrics, you can click add metrics here and then select event count. You can enter event count per user. You can also enter, for example, total users and click apply. But this report right now would show you all search terms including those that actually had some search results. So to fix this, you would need to add a filter. So click Add Filter here, and then select the dimension that we have just created, which is number of search results. And then here, it exactly must match zero. But right now, since 24 hours have not passed yet, I cannot create this filter. But if you do this, after 24 hours, then you will be able to enter zero here and then apply. So once you click apply, then you will need to save this report. So you can name this something like zero result search or something like that and click save. Then go back and then you can add that report to any of the topics or collections right here. So for example, let's say that I want to add that report to engagement section here. So I will edit the life cycle collection. And then I will find the zero results search report and I will drag it to engagement section, click Save, save changes to the current collection. And then I go back and then that report will appear right here. Here's an example of another property where I have implemented this. So here I can see that the filter is applied. And here in the first column, I can see what kind of keywords were people looking for, but they contained zero results. So this might be an opportunity for me to maybe create new content or new pages or, you know, something else to match that user intent. And that's how you can track site search with zero results. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.